Today I'm going to talk about game theory. Uh, game theory is part of like a larger process of, of, of scientific inquiry that would involve uh, rational choice theory, social, uh, social choice theory, or decision theory in general. And what this science aims to do is to study how humans make decisions and uh, you know whether they cooperate with each other or defect against one another. Um, it, it's meant to kind of model uh, human behavior and see what kind of results you get and uh, to see if something we can't learn about ourselves in the process, about the way we make decisions like life, des life decisions. And I'm going to tie in, I'm going to use a, a game, th uh, a game <clears throat> called Ultimatum Game. It's one of my favorite games in game theory. It's real simple. It's a very simple, easy to understand game. And it can tell you something about human nature. Uh, so, um, just a, a little background. When when a game games are you these studies are usually run in a university, and uh, students will play on a computer uh, a game. And oftentimes, instead of being playing a game against another person, they're actually playing against the computer, which is programmed to give them certain responses. But they're oftentimes tricked into thinking they're playing against another person, so they treat the computer as if it's another person and you know this this plays into concepts of fairness like what was fair to the, to my opponent what, what's fair to me um, and concepts of trade and you know to mutual benefit and stuff like that and defection against uh, other people uh, okay so let's just go ahead and, and look at my board <clears throat> I'm gonna bring my board into view top is game theory an example is ultimatum game and then you can see in a case here, this is a game where $10 are allocated to, to two players, but they have to agree on uh, allocating between them. So the, the guy on, the, on, your, uh, be on your left, he says, how about I get five and you get five? And then the guy on the right says, okay. And so that you can see the A at the bottom right there. That offer was accepted. And those college students or whoever literally get to keep five dollars each for during that study because they they agreed. So there was an incentive for them to agree on splitting up the money, the bounty of ten dollars, and they literally walk away from the university with five dollars in their pocket. So that that's an example of a study uh, of one round. And there could be a hundred rounds in, in in a study. So you could you could make a lot of cash if you learn how to make decisions and cooperate with other people. In these studies you can there's a lot on the line, okay? Now what happens if if uh, an, another scenario happens where <clears throat> guy on the left now he says, "Hey, how about how about I get uh, 9 and, and you get $1 and you just get 1 out of the $10 bounty that we're allotted this round. How about I get to keep 9 and you get to keep 1?" Well, the second guy here he goes, "Say hey, no way." I'm calling the whole thing off, and then that leads to the R in the bottom, uh, bottom right, and basically nobody gets any money on that round. So if the, if you can't get your partner or your trading partner or whoever to agree with you, you're not going to get any money. So there's an incentive to make a more, you know, fair dispersal of the bounty. Five to five is almost always accepted. Uh, Nine to one here is is very rarely accepted. Maybe 10, 15 percent of the time will somebody say, oh, "Okay, I'll be happy with one out of 10. Okay, so that's that's a the outline of ultimatum game. Is it uh, it does involve a bounty, which is not really doesn't really approximate real life in a market where people have to earn, they produce value, and then and then they can trade it. So it doesn't really go delve into uh, production of values, which is um, unique to humans in the in the living world or in the animal kingdom. We are the ones who c continually produce value rather than just take a bounty. Other animals they they take a bounty. Um, food for a lion means a deer has an antelope has to die. You know, it's a zero sum world for animals. But in humans, we, we have a positive sum world. We create more value um, out of things that weren't valuable. So, and at any rate, 
what's interesting about my uh, the reason why I put this video up is because there was a study done in 2012. It was done in China, in China which is largely communist. Um, college students were asked to play the ultimatum game, uh, but with one glitch. In this game, instead of saying, you know, we're going to allocate ten dollars to you guys to split amongst you if you can agree with each other. Um, they made it seem like one of the pers one of the the, t the two players, had the money, owned the money, in the first place. They it was their money to divide between the two. Now, in a purely uh, communist mindset, well, you would you'd probably think of a 50-50 split is what they're always going to prefer because, um, well, what in in communism is about the public ownership of property. Uh, and so the, the philosophy would be, therefore indicate that that offers should always be about equal 50 50 and on what happens I'm going to show you what happened in that 2012 study let's see if I can get this into view now okay what we see is a study at Southeast University in Nanjing China okay when all the money is on the right and the guy on the left gets to propose an offer. He says, how about I get half of your money? <laughs> the, the second guy, 83% of the time, they'll say, okay, you get half of my money, and I'll keep half, and they both walk away with five uh, units of value. But 17% of the time, the guy on the right, he says, no way, I'm calling the whole thing off, nobody gets any money this round, I'm not giving you half. And I thought, that's kind of funny. He's communist, isn't he? Well, not all Chinese are communists necessarily, but 17% um, he, he, of, the, of the students uh, rejected the equal offer when it was their money. Okay, now what happens when you say, like a big burgeoning government, you say, hey, I want seven to nine of, of, of what you own. Seven to nine, be like seventy to ninety percent, be equivalent to a tax rate of seventy to ninety percent. Uh, what happens then with the responder? He says uh, the acceptance rate is about eleven percent, which means the rejection rate is eighty-nine percent. So eighty-nine percent of these uh, college students in China would reject. Uh, would, would, would basically, like Ellis Wyatt and Atlas Shrugged, they'd rather burn down their oil wells than to pay a tax rate of 70 to 90 percent. Uh, they, they would not accept you taking 70 percent of what they owned. And that's, I thought, very interesting. I wonder what would happen if this study was done in America um, and at different times in America, like, uh, you know, in the 1800s, and 1900s and the 2000s. Uh, what would happen if you said, "Hey, can you can I take half of your money?" Uh, would uh, would 17% of us say, "Heck no, I'll burn it all down." <laughs> and if if they if we were proposed, "Hey, can I take 70 to 90% of your money?" If 89% of us would say, "Heck no, I'd rather burn it all down." Uh, that would be an interesting study uh, for researchers. I hope it gets done where you can somehow trick people into thinking it's their money that they're allocating. Um, and that's all for this video, I guess.